Next, is Amazon bringing a $5 billion facility to Newcastle County? We'll talk to County Executive Matt Meyer. This is the Delaware Way. Welcome to the Delaware Way. I'm Larry Menti. On the day that we are taping this show, a new $30 million library is opening in Newcastle County. So, is Amazon going to follow and open something here? That's what we'll be talking about with Newcastle County Executive Matt Meyer. We'll start with the library because we know that's for certain. Uh, congratulations, the $30 million library. Thank you, Larry. You know, uh, it took tremendous work starting with Dennis Greenhouse, my predecessor 20 years ago, Chris Coons, County Executive, Paul Clark, Tom Gordon. They all added to this library dream, and now it's really it's an innovation center. It's much bigger than any library this state Explain has Explain what done. that means. It's not just a library, but an innovation center. So the library I went to on Concord Pike growing up had a lot of books, and I went there to read. At the Route 9 Library, you can still do that. There's also an innovation center. There's a huge black box theater, an incredible theater where you can make movies, watch movies, performance space. There's a sensory room to do incredible things. I was playing today. They have a projector on the floor where you can actually kick a ball but it's a ball that just projected on the floor and incredible sensory things along the wall that help autistic kids and kids with alternative learning styles learn. There's a Lego room to help the early uh, you know, infants start to learn actually pre-engineering skills. There's all sorts of math resources. The place is lined with Wi-Fi, USB connections. There's a 3D printer, a maker space, so you can create things there. The idea is, that library is not just a place to address problems of illiteracy and improve literacy for young and old. It's also a place to address some of the most pressing problems in that Route 9 corridor to figure out how do we make sure our young people, our young adults are getting the job training they need. There's a commercial cafeteria. We're going to have a culinary arts program there wow. in partnership with William Penn. Um, and a number of other job training and all sorts of other programs there for the community. Just because I know the question's going to come up, how was this all paid for? So it was paid for through our bonding authority um, in, in conjunction with the state, both the state's bonding authority and the county's bonding authority. We're going to be paying for it over the next 30 years. Because I know a lot of people look at the, at the deficit you have in Newcastle County and say, well, how can we afford to open up a, a $30 million library? But the funding for this has been going on for a long, long time. For a long time. time. That's right. It's not $30 million spent in a single year. It's over a period of time. But it's still a concern. It's still something we do need. You can't just put everything on the credit card and say, oh, we don't need to worry about it. It is a concern. A lot of decisions were made before I came into office. Now we're doing everything we can to manage our finances properly and use this facility to the best benefit of the community. You talked about some of the benefits of it, but what are the, uh, the benefits that go beyond just the educational aspects of it? Do, is there money that comes in because you have something like this in your community? Well, the first thing to note is it really adds, and I think this is the greatest value, it adds to the dignity of a community and a corridor that's been long ignored by governments. If you talk to people in the communities of Dunleaf, Simon's Gardens, Rose Hill, people feel like they've been left out. They feel like they've been left out a long time, and now they have something. They have a community institution to say, okay, this is the basis, this is the cornerstone on which we can build our foundation, start attracting businesses. For example, there's not a single financial institution, there's not a single bank between 4th Street in Wilmington and 295 going across the Dell Memorial Bridge along that whole Route 9 corridor. There are so many, there are close to 15, 20,000 people living there and not a single financial institution. Because we put that library there, we're now talking to some major financial institutions about coming in there. We're looking at partners to do senior housing and senior living, the high quality housing in that area. So when you look at the, the dollars and cents, nobody's paying money when they come into a library. We, of course, are constantly fundraising, trying to bring people in to make contributions. But we think that the larger financial return will be over time in building the community, the economic community in that area. It does fill in the technology gap for the underprivileged in that area, does it not? Well, it starts to. I don't think a building alone fills a technology it's gap. It's to go. It is, it's a start. We need to get people in there. We need to get both people to learn and to teach. We're going to have some pretty innovative uh, coding workshops there. We have a lot of virtual reality equipment there. So we're excited about utilizing that in a way that's productive to members of the community, young and old. 
And when you talk about uh, that area, I, I know you have a initiative going on with vacant homes. That's part of the same. That's that's part of the same improvement of the of the corridor. Right. right? Certainly. I mean, the vacant homes initiative is countywide. Where when I came in in January eight months ago, we said there are nearly 1,300 vacant homes. We have a land use department. We have a housing unit in our community service department. We have a police department. We have a special services and parks department that's all sort of working separately and touching this vacant housing program. I brought everybody in a room and I said, let's develop a comprehensive plan. We ended up now collaborating with the state and the city of Wilmington, to some extent the city of Dover, nonprofit partners across the county. We've already passed three pieces of legislation, two at the state level, one at the county level, that we're hoping turns detriment, turns a blight in a neighborhood into an opportunity for someone to own a home, sometimes for as cheap as fifteen or twenty thousand dollars. Everybody wants to quantify these things. So you had this many v vacant homes when you came into office. How many do you want after your term is up? Well, we had close to one thousand three hundred. Now we're down to one thousand two hundred and sixty as of sorry, one thousand two hundred sixty as a math teacher. You don't say the and in the middle of the number. The <laughs> okay. and is for the decimal <laughs> point. It. We have one thousand two hundred sixty uh, as of last week. We're hoping, now keep in mind, as we take vacant houses and get them into the market and get them occupied so they come off our list, there are other houses coming on our list. Um, so one thing is just to stabilize the list. It's been going up over a series of time. But if we can get that list under 1,200 by the end of my four years and then by the end of eight years, uh, closer to 1,000, I think we'll be in a better place. You mentioned that you were a math teacher. You brought that up a lot when you were campaigning, and it was extremely effective because you were talking about the deficit, and the deficit was at the time $5 million, and it was expected to balloon. So, you, so much of the reason the people voted for you is because of that deficit. How have you been doing since then? What's the deficit now? Well, it's ballooning. <laughs> <laughs> it's not it's not ballooning that fast. It's it's start it's starting to increase. We're 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 doing everything we can to reduce spending. So when I came into office, for example, in fiscal year 2017, which is the fiscal year ended June 30th, we had a five we were looking at a five million dollar deficit. In the course of six months, we cut that down by about three million dollars. So we had a two million dollar deficit at the end of the year, which means in fiscal year 2017, when we closed the books, we ended up spending about two million dollars more than we took in as revenue. This fiscal year, when we started, when I came into office, we were looking at about a 13 million dollar deficit, where we'd be spending in fiscal year 18, our current fiscal year, between July 1 of this year, June 30th of next year, we'd be spending 13 million dollars more than we're taking in as revenue. A number of people looked at me and said, just raise taxes. That's how you fix the problem. I felt like the first thing we should do is get spending under control, that you can't keep spending wildly and raising taxes and spending wildly and raising taxes. Let's get spending under control and see if we can get through this without putting the burden on our taxpayers. So, so far, we've taken that $13 million deficit and got it for this fiscal year down to around $9 million. I want to pick this up and, and talk more about the budget when we continue our conversation with Newcastle County County Executive Matt Meyer. When the Delaware Way continues.